Right, so we're going to look at how do we complete the square. Um, to find the value of c that makes the expression a perfect square trinomial, we have to first find half the coefficient of the x term, square the result of step 1, replace c with the result of step 2, and write expression as the square of the binomial. All right, but that doesn't make much sense because we don't even know what we're talking about with c, right? Uh, well, for that, we need an example. All right, so I'm going to find the value of c that would complete the square here for x squared plus 12x plus c. All right, well, let's go through our steps. First step is find half the coefficient of the x term. The coefficient of the x term is 12, so I'm going to find half of 12, 6. Step 2 says to square the result of step 1, so 6 squared equals 36. Replace c with the, res uh, with the result of step 2. So what value of c may, uh, makes the expression a perfect square trinomial? Plus 12x plus 36 makes this a perfect square trinomial. Okay, so this 36, this is the value of c that makes this a perfect square trinomial. Why is it a perfect square trinomial? Well, what two, va uh, what two numbers multiply to positive 36 and add to 12? 6 and 6. Six. Six and six. So now I can rewrite this as x plus 6 squared. All right, so the whole step four, write the expression as the square of the binomial. That's what this means. This is a square of a binomial. Okay, let's look at it for x squared minus 9x plus c. My first step is to take half of that negative 9. Well, I'm going to leave it in fraction form, negative 9 over 2. The second step was to square that number. Any negative number squared is going to come out positive. So negative 9 squared is positive 81. Uh, 2 squared is 4. Because to square a fraction, we square the numerator and we square the denominator. So this 81 over 4 is the value of c that makes this a perfect square trinomial. I'm going to rewrite this as x squared minus 9x plus 81 over 4. So to rewrite this as a, as a uh, square of the binomial, we're going to use this negative 9 over 2 again and write x minus 9 over 2 squared. So we answered two questions with this problem. First, if we were simply asked to complete the square, this is we completed the square and then wrote it as a square of the binomial. If we were just asked what value of c makes this a perfect square, well, we replace c with 81 over 4. So that's the value of c that made this a perfect square. So there's multiple questions that we are answering at the same time. 16x. All right. We're going to solve an equation by completing the square. If I say solve, I'm trying to get it all the way down to x equals. OK, so here's the example that we're going to start with. I'm going to solve x squared plus 16x plus 28 equals 0. All right, so if I were solving this by factoring, well, I know that 14 and 2 multiply to 28, and they add to 16. So my solutions would be x equals negative 14, x equals negative 2. But sometimes the answers don't come out as pretty. We're just going to start with an example like this, show you how to do it by completing the square, and then get to some examples uh, where your answers might have imaginary or just uh, some kind of square root in them. OK, so if a is not equal to 1, divide every term by a. Well, a is 1 here because we only have 1x squared. So now I need to write the left side of the equation in the form a x squared plus bx. So those should be the only things on this side. x squared plus 16x equals negative 28. And I want you to leave a space after that 16x in the equal sign. Okay, so why is it Yeah, the 28 is negative because it jumped over the equal sign. OK, now let's do what we've been doing to complete the square. So off to the side, I'm going to take half the coefficient of x. The coefficient of x is what? 16. So I take half of that, and that's 8. Then I'm going to square that. 8 squared is 
64. And they'll add the result to both sides. So that's why I left a space, plus 64. Now, the reason I have to add it to both sides is because it's an equation. Whatever I add to one side, I have to add to both sides. So yeah, that's the question. Why, why did we even do that? Well, it's because, look, what two numbers multiply to 64 and add to 16? 8 and 8. So I can change this now to x plus 8 squared equals 36. That helps me because if I don't know how to solve by factoring or things like that, I can now take the square root of both sides because I've gotten all the x's down to this binomial that's squared on the outside of the parentheses. So now, whenever I take the square root, I need to remember that this is now x plus 8, the squared went away, and it's plus or minus 6. All right, so to solve for x, we need to subtract 8 from both sides. And if you look here, we have, I'll move this over here, x equals negative 8 plus 6, and x equals negative 8 minus 6. Because it was a plus or minus 6, we, we can break it up into plus 6 and minus 6. Uh, if, if this was like a square root situation, you wouldn't have to break it up because you can't actually solve them. This we can solve. Negative 8 plus 6 is negative 2. And negative 8 minus 6 is negative 14. All right, let's consider 2x squared minus 20x plus 26 equals 0. We're going to solve that by completing the square. If you look back at all that stuff that you just wrote down, um, the very first step is to check if a is equal to 1. Well, a is 2 here because it's in front of the x squared. So I need to divide everything by 2. That's going to be my first step. And I can do that because it's set equal to 0. And what's 0 divided by 2? 0. zero. zero. So it stays the same. So 2. Oh, what am I doing? What are you doing? I don't know. Hold on. All right, so I'm left over with x squared minus 10x plus 13 equals 0. Now, I need to get x squared minus 10x by itself. I'm going to leave a space. Equals, what does the 13 become? 0. No. no. If it goes to the other side of the equal sign, positive 13. Yeah, because we subtracted it from both sides. Okay, so now my negative 10... I divide by 2 and I get negative 5. And then that negative 5 squared is 25. So to both sides, I add 25. All right, x squared minus 10x plus 25 is a perfect square trinomial. Because if it was minus 10, and look over here, we have this minus 5. This is going to be x minus 5 squared equals 12. All right, so now to solve, we take the square root of both sides. If I take the square root, it needs to be plus or minus. So x minus 5 equals plus or minus the square root of 12. Well, now I have to check, does 12 break down? Like, yeah, do any perfect squares go into 12? 4. 4. So, little side note, the square root of 12 is the same thing as square root of 4 times the square root of 3. I can take the square root of 4, so x minus 5 equals plus or minus 2 times the square root of 3. To solve for x, we just add 5 to both sides. x equals 5 plus or minus 2 square roots of 3. Since we can't actually do 5 plus or minus 2 square roots of 3 and not get a rational number, um, we can stop here, and this is... These are my solutions. All right, lastly, let's look at uh, 3x squared minus 12x plus 27 equals 0. a is not equal to 1. a is equal to 3. So the first step is to divide everything by 3. I'm left with x squared minus 4x plus 9 equals 0. Okay, so I'm going to move the 9 to the other side to get x squared minus 4x by itself. I know I'm going to add something. Equals negative 9 
plus something whenever I complete the square. To complete the square, I look at the coefficient of x. It's negative 4. So I take negative 4 divided by 2 is negative 2, and then I square it. Negative 2 squared is positive 4. So I'm going to add 4 to both sides. Um, the two numbers that multiply to positive 4 and add to negative 4, well, we know it's this negative 2 right here. So we have x minus 2 squared equals negative 5. Solving for x, I take the square root of both sides. And I have x minus 2 is equal to plus or minus the square root of negative 5. Well, I can't take the square root of a negative number. If the negative is, is inside the radical, I have to bring out an i. And finally, to solve, I add 2 to both sides to get x by itself. 2 plus or minus i times the square root of 5.